Welcome to lesson 9-1, graphing ax squared equals y. These equations are called quadratic equations because they have x to the second power in them. Now, when we graph these, we will not get lines. We're going to get the sexiest curves in the universe. And we're going to take a look at those right now. Look at a very, very simple one. Let's go ahead and let the a value be equal to 1. Um, so what we're basically going to then have is y equals x to the second power. Strip down, very, very simple quadratic. Okay. Now, to begin, let's set up a little t-chart with a whole bunch of values. All right, we need some positives, and we need some negatives, and we're going to need a zero. So let's go from negative six to positive six in increments of one. What we're going to see here, one of these, and when we square negative six, we will get positive 36. When we square negative five, we'll get positive 25. Squaring negative four, we get 16. Squaring negative 4, squaring negative 1, we get 1. Positive 1, we get positive 1, we get 1. Squaring positive 2, we get 4. Squaring positive 3, we get 9. Oh, wow, look, something's happening here. The, the values are repeating themselves. Squaring positive 5, we also get 25. And squaring positive 6, we get 36. So, we have like a repetition here. We, what happens up here with a negative x is also generating the same y down here at a positive 6. So this, these y values are repeating and this is what's going to cause the sexiness. In fact, they repeat after the 0 equals 0. Hmm. So there's going to be something very special about that point right there. And we'll see it when we go ahead and graph. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the graph for this. Point is at negative 6, 36. So we'll go over to negative 6. Be a nice big 4, 16 is right here, right here. And, and now we get to see what happens when we begin to repeat those y values. Here. All right, now let's connect these with as smooth a curve as we can until you get a feel for what's happening. Sexiest curve in the universe. Oh. All right, let's talk for a moment about that zero, zero point. That's the point about which we started to get the re repetition. So in this particular case, we're down here. You can see it's the lowest point on our graph, and so therefore it would be the minimum point, the smallest point on this graph, and it has a special name. It's called the vertex, V-E-R-T-E-X. It's the vertex of the parabola. Now, another thing that you need to notice is that everything that happened over here on this side repeated itself on this side. So that makes this a reflection symmetric figure. All right? And the x the excuse me, the y axis right here is its line of symmetry. Okay? If we were to fold this piece of paper on the y axis, everything over here would come and lay right on top of everything over here. So, this is a All right, now we need to take a look at what will happen if we change the value of a in the equation from 1. Let's double it. Let's just make it 2, okay? So very quickly then, the y, all these y values that we had previously would then be doubled, okay? So we uh, had 36, so now we're going to have 72, and by George down here is also going to be a 72. Uh, we had 25, so now we're going to get a 50. 
uh, 4, if we square that, we're going to get this. And then we're going to have and repeat itself. 2 and positive. <sighs> okay, negative 6, 72. We go over to negative 6, 72. That goes off the graph. Well, let's see here. These two went off the graph. How about negative 4, comma, 32? So we go to there. And, and then we And we still have positive 1, 8. Four, the whole way up here. Let's take a look at this. If voila. It got skinnier. Wow. All right, so it got skinnier when I made the A, okay? Remember the general form is y equals ax squared. As the A gets larger, the parabola gets skinnier because those y values shoot up. Uh, they get taller much faster. All right. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's see what would be happening then if we made the A value smaller. Right, let's take a look at y equals one half x squared. Okay. All right. So if we plug in a negative six here, we will get uh, negative six times negative six, which is thirty-six, and half of thirty-six is eighteen. Okay. Uh, we put in a 5, let's see here, uh, negative 5 squared would be 25, half of 25 is 12 and a half, 12.5, and then we'll get 4 and a 2, a 0, 0 spot. Okay, well let's see what that looks like graphically. <laughs> Dot right there, and then negative 5, 13, so 12 and a half, negative 4, negative 2, 1 half, 4 and a half. Huh. And I guess if you think about it, that makes sense. All right. Alright, now, the last thing we want to take a look at is what happens when y is equal to the opposite of x squared, the negative 6. Negative 6, y would be equal to the opposite of negative 6 squared. Well, you have to do the square first. So negative 6 times negative 6 is 36, and then the opposite of 36 is negative 36. Okay, all right, negative 5, that would be the opposite of negative 5 squared, which would be the opposite of 25, which is negative 25, 16, which is negative 16. So, negative 2, you know that you can't have negative 0, there's no such thing, so this would just be 0. Now, when we put in positive 1, hmm. positive 1 squared is 1. The opposite of 1 is negative 1. So look, it's happening again. We put in the 2, 5, negative 25, and the 6, negative 36. So we have... case, the vertex is at the top. It's the highest point on the graph, so it's called a maximum. Okay, and you still have your lines of symmetry being the y-axis, what's happening over here.